African rice was domesticated at least 3,000 years ago. It's totally separate from Asian rice. It's its own species named Ariza glabarima. A lot of the African rice varieties that we've studied here at NYU are salt tolerant, and we wanted to understand that better, how over time it became salt tolerant. We were able to do field work in West Africa. We got a grant supplement from the National Science Foundation, and Michelle, Anne, and I went um, over together, starting in Benin, then going to Togo, and over to Senegal. I've been working with Rachel Meyer for the past year in the Perugenin lab studying African rice genomics and this summer we got to spend a month abroad in Africa conducting interviews with African rice farmers to learn about how they grow rice and what are the challenges that they face. Um, so rice is a global crop and as scientists it's been really hard for us to contextualize our work that we do in New York with what's going on in West Africa. So it was really important for us to actually go there and see rice growing in the field. Um, while we were in West Africa, we learned so much about the different challenges that farmers are facing, especially in coastal Senegal. Rice production, especially with African rice, has been really negatively affected by climate change within the past decade. One thing that was really interesting in that matter about African rice is that the farmers that we met were mostly cultivating their um, rice in what is called upland fields. So these fields are not like the paddy irrigated paddy fields that most people imagine when they think about rice cultivations. These are uh, drained fields that are only watered by rain because most of these farmers have no access and no money for irrigation. And so that's why changes in climate and especially in the patterns of uh, rainfall are going to affect them very hard. We conducted a semi-structured survey asking about what farmers plant for themselves and for income, what varieties of African rice they grew, and what sets those varieties apart. We also asked why they still grow this heritage rice instead of transitioning over to Asian rice agriculture. We asked what the biggest challenges were to rice farming and what farmers encounter from climate change. We also asked about how farmers innovate to fight these challenges and how communities help each other and share seeds. When you stand back and look at the 50 pages of interview data, you see quickly that African rice is so much more than a crop. African rice is a memento from the ancestors. It's a heal all medicinal plant. It's a means to make it through the unpredictable weather. Its seeds are a gift women give to each other and women lift each other out of struggle by teaching how to cultivate it. The skill to cultivate African rice is the security passed to the next generation. This woman teaches us lyrics that invite girls in the village, in this case she names a young cousin of hers, to cultivate African rice. The farmers that maintain African rice in Senegal and Togo are subsistence farmers, which means that most of what they grow is not for sale, but what they use themselves to feed their families. Their fields are very different, dry and salty in Senegal with a short rainy season of only three months, whereas Togo has longer rainy seasons and rich forests. Both regions are affected by decreased soil fertility and by climate change. All farmers perceived shifts in the rainy season and they all felt the threat of drought. 
people are practicing agriculture on less and less land, and they're getting less yield because of soil degradation. But maintaining multiple African rice varieties, even if the farmers have decided to also plant Asian rice, is their insurance to still get a harvest of some rice. Where the rain is scarce in Senegal, farmers have some varieties that mature in less than three months. In Togo, certain fields have flooding and need the local varieties. Where birds are a big threat, some varieties have awns that ward off the birds. That is the general like notion bird that, resistance. yes, it's bird resistance. Uh, the rice can use some of it in energy or its Obviously. source so to it's do a trade this. Off, it's a trade-off. Yeah. Islands with shallow ocean water tables have multiple salt tolerant varieties. Farmers that cannot afford the fertilizers that Asian rice requires can still get a harvest from African rice. Africa Rice, uh, the institution that we were working through, they do trainings for how to make hybrid rice. You actually have to cut open the flowers of the rice plant and you use a small vacuum to suck up pollen and that's called the emasculator. So um, Africa Rice has released a type of rice called Narica or New Rice for Africa and this is a hybrid between Asian and African rice. Some farmers are starting to grow it and we're really enthusiastic about it. But a lot of those farmers still will grow their traditional African rice varieties because even the Narica doesn't have every quality that you want. You need to keep, for especially for smallholder farmers, you need to keep a lot of variety in your fields because you can't control the weather, you can't control the water. Most farmers actually had three or four different varieties that they were growing and um, people were really eager to show us. Everyone brought their calabash or gourd bowl out um, with different varieties of African rice to show us. Women were really enthusiastic to share how much they were willing to give away their seeds if people needed them. Say somebody lost their crop one year, they, the women come at the start of the rainy season to talk to each other and people share their varieties. We saw a lot of women that were starting rice growing collectives, so small women's groups of maybe about 20 women that would teach each other farming strategies and would innovate in uh, situations where they were struggling. Before we went on this trip, I did some environmental modeling to look at areas of West Africa that would be at most risk for sea level rise and ground salinity and so it was insane to actually be standing in a rice field in coastal Senegal that was absolutely crusted over with salt and to see what I had modeled back in New York in real life. And being in that field gave me a much bigger motivation to think more about what we can do as scientists to encourage better policy for these farmers and it's really inspired us to think about um, creating more public and private partnerships 
in order to help these farmers combat the effects of climate change on rice farming.